Now, after having discussed about the classification that is typical and as well as atypical antipsychotics, now let me discuss the actions of the typical antipsychotics. So, if you take the actions of the typical antipsychotics, remember these drugs they act by blocking the D2 receptors and they differ significantly in their potency. Like we have low potency drugs in typical antipsychotics and we have high potency drugs under typical antipsychotics. But the basic mechanism of action of these drugs is these drugs they act by blocking the D2 receptors. Right, these drugs they act by blocking Okay, so these drugs they act by blocking the D2 receptors and they differ significantly in their potency. Right, now let me tell you the low potency drugs and as well as the high potency drugs. Now, if you take the low potency drugs. Right, you take this particular low potency drugs. Low potency drugs, the example like what we have is chlorpromazine. So remember, chlorpromazine is a low potency drug. What is the property of this particular low potency drugs is, these low potency drugs, they are highly sedative. Whereas the high potency drugs, they cause very less sedation right they are highly sedative whereas you take the high potency drugs the high potency drugs or the high potency typical antipsychotics they cause less sedation all right next now a point that you should remember regarding the high potency drugs is they cause less sedation that is the advantage of these high potency over the low potency drug but remember these high potency drugs are more likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms right one of the example of this high potency drug is your haloperidol Okay, haloperidol is a high potency drug, right? Now, this particular high potency drug, they are more likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms. Okay, they are more likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms. And this extra pyramidal symptoms are maximum with haloperidol. Right, the extra pyramidal symptoms are maximum with haloperidol. Whereas, this extra pyramidal symptoms are maximum with haloperidol. This can be asked as a multiple choice question. And extra pyramidal symptoms are least common with thioridazine right least common with thioridazine okay so that is about your the extra pyramidal symptoms next let me tell you another very important point you take this high potency drug, high potency drug, they have very low anticholinergic and as well as the autonomic side effects as compared to the low potency drug, right? So these low potency drugs, they have the anticholinergic and as well as the autonomic side effects.
right anticholinergic and as well as autonomic side effects okay whereas you take with the high potency drugs high potency drugs they have low anticholinergic and autonomic side effects as compared to the low potency drugs right so these high potency drugs remember they have low anticholinergic and as well as the autonomic side effects okay next remember these high potency drugs they have very lower seizure threshold and these high potency drugs like your haloperidol or thioridazine can precipitate the convulsions in an epileptic patient right so another important point what you should remember is these high potency drugs they have very low seizure threshold right they have very lower seizure threshold so because they have very lower seizure threshold they can precipitate right they can precipitate convulsions okay so they can precipitate convulsions in epileptic patient right they can precipitate the convulsions in epileptic patients all right next another important point is all of these agents they are potent anti emetic drugs except thioridazine so thioridazine it is not it does not have the anti emetic property whereas the other high potency drugs they have a potent anti emetic activity so one another important point what you should remember is these high potency drugs they have potent anti emetic activity right in the sense these drugs they will reduce the vomiting of the individual except thioridazine right and this will be asked as a multiple choice question because thioridazine does not have the anti emetic activity next you take this low potency drugs right low potency drugs the low potency drugs they possess the significant alpha blocking activity right they have right they have significant alpha blocking activity the maximum alpha blocking activity is seen with the chlorpromazine right chlorpromazine is a low potency drug this particular chlorpromazine it is having maximum alpha blocking activity so maximum is with chlorpromazine okay so low potency drugs they possess significant alpha blocking the maximum is with chlorpromazine and not only that this particular low potency drugs right this particular low potency drugs they also have the anticholinergic activity right anticholinergic activity but a point what you should remember here is you take this particular thioridazine thioridazine is the drug which is having maximum anticholinergic activity right it has maximum anticholinergic activity all right next now you take this particular high potency compounds so high potency compounds they have less activity 
on these receptors that is one important point now due to blockade of the d2 receptors right what is the mechanism of action of these particular drugs they block the d2 receptors due to blockade of the d2 receptors in hypothalamus and as well as in the pituitary gland these drugs can increase the prolactin levels in the individual and that will result in galacturia and as well as amenorrhea right this is the important adverse effect with these particular drugs so remember these drugs by blocking d2 receptors in hypothalamus and as well as the pituitary gland what will happen if the d2 receptors are blocked which is nothing but the dopamine receptors when dopamine receptors are blocked there is increase in the prolactin secretion now what is the effect of the prolactin on the secretion of the milk the prolactin will increase the synthesis and secretion of the milk and what is the effect of the prolactin on the menstruation remember prolactin will reduce the levels of fsh and lh and thereby prolactin will cause amenorrhea if there is hyperprolactinemia in the female okay so remember this increased prolactin will cause galacturia and as well as even amenorrhea right galacturia and as well as even amenorrhea so this is the or these are the actions of the typical antipsychotics so remember these typical antipsychotics they act by blocking the d2 receptors right they differ in their potency into a low potency drugs and as well as the high potency drugs the low potency drugs example what we have is chlorpromazine which is a highly sedative drug whereas the high potency drug they cause less sedation the examples what we have is the haloperidol and as well as thioridazine but the problem with this particular haloperidol or with your high potency drugs they have the extra pyramidal symptoms and the maximum is with haloperidol and this extra pyramidal symptoms are least common with thioridazine and these drugs they have low anticholinergic and as well as the autonomic side effects and these drugs they have low seizure threshold so in epileptic patients they can precipitate the convulsions and let me tell you another important point these high potency drug they have potent anti emetic action except thioridazine and thioridazine remember it has maximum anti cholinergic effect now you take the low potency drugs low potency drugs as i have said you already they are highly sedative they also have anticholinergic and as well as autonomic side effects and they have significant alpha blocking activity and the maximum is with your chlorpromazine now because of the blocking of the d2 receptors in hypothalamus and as well as the pituitary gland they will increase the prolactin level of the individual will result in galacturia and as well as amenorrhea by these particular drugs now let me discuss the actions of atypical antipsychotics so if you see this atypical antipsychotics like these drugs they act by antagonistic action at 5 ht2 receptors right so if you take the mechanism of action of these drugs they have antagonistic action at 5 ht 2a receptors right now and remember these atypical antipsychotics these drugs they act by antagonistic action at 5 ht 2a receptors and it these drugs they may or may not possess the d2 blocking activity right these drugs they may or may not possess the d2 blocking activity all right next now 
A point what you should remember here is they are not having they may or may not possess the D2 blocking activity. That is the reason why these drugs they are less likely to cause they are less likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms. Whereas you take the typical antipsychotics, the typical antipsychotics they were predominantly blocking the D2 receptors. That is the reason why the extra pyramidal symptoms are very common with them, very particularly with the high potency drug. Whereas you take the atypical antipsychotics, they may or may not possess the D2 blocking activity. Because they are may or may not possess the D2 blocking activity, that is the reason why they have less likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms. Right, less likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms. Next, another important point you see here most of these agents, right, most of these agents, which one the atypical antipsychotics, they will cause weight gain, they will cause hyperlipidemia, and they will also cause the new onset diabetes mellitus. So, if you take the adverse effects of these drugs they can cause weight gain right they can cause weight gain they will also cause hyperlipidemia right they will also cause hyperlipidemia and the other one is new onset diabetes mellitus right new onset diabetes mellitus but there is an exception. Most of your atypical antipsychotics, they will cause weight gain, hyperlipidemia and as well as new onset diabetes mellitus. But there are certain drugs, there are certain atypical antipsychotics which do not cause weight gain, hyperlipidemia and as well as new onset diabetes mellitus. The exceptions are Ziprasidone. Right, the exceptions are ziprasidone and then we have the aripiprazole. Right, aripiprazole. So remember, except this ziprasidone and as well as aripiprazole, they do not cause weight gain. Right, these drugs, they do not cause weight gain, hyperlipidemia and new onset diabetes mellitus. Whereas the other drugs, they will cause these adverse effects. Okay, right. So remember, if you take the actions of atypical antipsychotics, the mechanism of action is the antagonistic action at 5 HT2A receptors. They may or may not possess the D2 blocking activity. Because they may or may not possess the D2 blocking activity, they are less likely to cause the extra pyramidal symptoms. So these are the actions of the atypical antipsychotics.